Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, August 14, 2024. I want to do a review of hormone replacement therapy because it seems that we're kind of stuck at times on in medicine on not doing it correctly. Uh, before I do that, though, I do want to give a big shout out to Alita Toma and Sanjay Pani, two amazing oncologists. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Taylor, uh, who is our go-to breast surgeon, and there are several others in the community that are also outstanding, but uh, Stephanie's our person the vast majority of time, and Dr. Habash and his team uh, with reconstruction out of Baylor and Dallas, who are taking tremendous care of our patients. And I have to tell you that breast cancer care in Oklahoma City with this group and then people at um, Mercy and at Integris are just fantastic. Um, and I'm not sliding other facilities, but these are the facilities I, of the providers I use the most at, um, um, as at Integris, Mercy, and uh, the group I mentioned. And they're all doing great care. Um, and I don't think Oklahoma City would, we wouldn't have the healthcare we did if we didn't have these people, which is kind of in distinction to what I see a lot of the time. So many thanks to you people who take such amazing care of our patients all the time. So hormone replacement therapy, and hormone replacement therapy is a great subject to talk about in light of breast cancer because there's this massive misunderstanding that I think should have been put to rest a long time ago, but just can't be, and that's that hormone replacement therapy facilitates breast cancer. It does not facilitate breast cancer. It's actually the opposite. So in 2001, this study called the Women's Health Initiative came out, which said, oh, hormone replacement therapy causes breast cancer acceleration and increases the risk of incidence but not death by 33% after three years of exposure. The study didn't show that. The study showed that using a oral estrogen with a synthetic version of progesterone, which is what's in a birth control pill, not natural hormones that match what your ovaries make, um, accelerated breast cancer risk. The estrogen alone arm in this study showed a decrease in breast cancer. And so that was kind of confusing um, because the study didn't show that hormone replacement therapy was bad. It showed that this one type was bad. It would be like saying um, all of Europe is bad when really it's just Belgium. And that's just an example. There's nothing wrong with Belgium. I want to be clear. I'm just, you know, but it's like a hasty generalization, a logical fallacy as a, a philosophy major. So, so we jump forward over the next 20 years and we see that estrogen alone consistently has no impact or lowers the risk. Estrogen with bioidentical progesterone has no increased risk. We see studies out of Australia that shows estrogen and testosterone decrease risk. And then finally in 21, the 20 year data on the Women's Health Initiative comes out and lo and behold, they go, oops, <laughs> we made a mistake. The estrogen arm not only lowered the incidence of breast cancer by 25%, it lowered death from breast cancer by 40%. So they said it directly in the study. We have inadvertently proven that the only thing that prophyl is prophylaxis for breast cancer death is estrogen. And so that made people start to sit up and notice that maybe we've been doing it. We've not been following things correctly, especially since there's all this data that shows a kind of a global 50% reduction in death over time if you do hormone replacement therapy after your early 50s. It's actually if you start it at 48 or younger, you get a 68% reduction in death if your ovaries aren't working or they've been removed. So maybe we've been doing this wrong. And But the problem with that is when the first study came out in 2001, the FDA changed the recommendations to make it only for five years at most, which made no sense because if you were going to look at that study and Prempro, which was the drug that gave breast cancer in three years, why would you even let people be on it more than two? But you know, hey, FDA. And so, but anyway, so they threw out all the hormone replacement therapy, said it was all bad, which they were totally wrong, just like a lot of things we've seen. And in 21, the new data comes out, and do they change the recommendations at all? No, it's three years in a few weeks, and they haven't changed any of the recommendations to reflect the science they used originally, and it's the updated science. So hormone replacement therapy is great for you on average. I mean, it doesn't work for everyone, but remember, where does where do hormones work? And not that you would remember this, but <laughs> if you're a provider, I'd be telling you this. The hormones work in the mitochondria of your cells. So when you have estrogen and testosterone and potentially progesterone or DHEA, those hormones work inside the mitochondria to make cells work. And there's a greater effect in 
more particular hormone-dominated tissues, but all mitochondria use these. And so when we get the mitochondria working, we get cells to work, organs to work, etc. And so people on hormone replacement therapy feel better. They have greater clarity of thought on average. Um, they're calmer, they're happier, they have less depression, they have much greater neurocognition, their sex drive goes up. Uh, both estrogen alone or estrogen with testosterone or testosterone alone speed metabolism and lower the risk of diabetes. You have better insulin control. The big thing with estrogen is you just don't take it orally and then you lose the insulin benefit in terms of using it. So again, lots of great things with hormones. A lot of people know the general parameters of what they do for you in terms of anti-aging, so I'm not going to go into that. But the point is they're very safe. It, they just have to be given by people who know what they're doing, and that isn't always the case. Um, there's You can do topical creams, lotions, gels, um, patches for estrogen. You can do, for testosterone, creams. We do a, a lot of creams, a ton of pellets with estrogen and testosterone. We also do shots uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, but we still do a lot of shots of um, hormones. Um, so very safe stuff uh, and the other rule of thumb is if you're ever taking progesterone it needs to be natural you know, when you're doing hormone replacement therapy so again lots and lots of detail uh, further with that but just again hormone replacement therapy is great for you think about it it's anti-aging and it's part of our whole theory on biohacking so take care and good night